Hello, my name is Hilda Shannon, and I am uh, representing also, not a filmmaker, but I'm representing them, um, for the making of The Fittest, the first movie in the uh, Steam category. All right, so let's let's start with uh, making of the fist. Okay, I must say, very interesting film, um, very educational. And uh, one thing I want to know, technically, uh, what kind of what kind of footage were you using, or not footage, but what kind of equipment were you using to capture those pictures? So that's where I have to emphasize I'm only representing okay, the filmmakers okay. uh, because um, Sarah Hall, which would be able to answer those questions, uh, she's not here. Absolutely. But I spoke to her about it and she said it was very simple when it comes to filmmaking. They were originally planning to make a, um, to join an expedition down to the Antarctic and do the shooting there. That was canceled, so they had to go to alternative. And that's where I come in. I'm the granddaughter of um, who was on that um, expedition and discovered that fish. And through, long story short, I got in contact with um, Sean Carroll, who wrote a book um, about the, the book called Into the Wild, Into yes. the Jungle, actually, from the Jungle, yeah. where he uses um, stories from um, scientists who do ex go on expeditions and use those to introduce science by telling a story. To, and he always wanted to make movies based on those, and it, when I told him that we had, my mother has um, lots of my grandfather's um, original glass panel, glass slides, his original notes from the trip, his lecture notes, and then the bolts started, you know, started rolling, and we let them scan it, and they introduced that into the movie in addition to the footage as you saw with uh, Bill Dietrich and the other scientists who now study these fish. So it was a combination of this old material um, and interviews with the scientists who currently work on it. Wow. That's, okay, well that's very fascinating. Uh, it's actually all about that. I think you've actually informed us, informed us of so much within that film, just right there in the nutshell. Now, um, let me go ahead and talk about uh, the hero, okay? I Personally, I think animation, animation has got to be a very grueling process. Am I right about that? Or? I think it would be safe to say that information has always been a grueling process. Okay, okay <laughs> cool, awesome. So now, um, tell me, oh, tell me about your process and what you did as, as part of the film and everything like that. The film was actually a collaboration. It was a master class that was run by Eric Goldberg, who was a Disney animator, has been there for an awfully long time, and is also animated with people like Richard Williams out of the UK. So he had a ton of experience in directing. He directed Pocahontas. He did the character designs for the genie in Aladdin. So the, we had this like all-star guy come in and basically be our mentor. We had about 15 people. That entire film was done in 12 weeks. Now for three minutes of animation from no story concept at all to a fully colored, completed animation. That's a ton of work to do in that amount of time with that many people. We used the Toon Boom Harmony uh, setup, and basically we did this film traditionally, all on paper, so all of the animation that you're seeing is drawn by hand by animators. We would then do dailies every week, so everybody had to be responsible about getting their stuff shot under the camera. And after that, we would scan all of the images. We would put them through the vector-based program, which is to improve harmony, and we would do our cleanup and our color. And then we do sound and all that great stuff. All of that through the process. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Again, that is just absolutely amazing. Like I said, it, it must be um, very grueling to work through those hours. There's got to be a lot of um, pencils that were broken in and, and erasers that were shortened. Yes. I can only imagine the, the, the drums and everything shooting across the floor and on the walls and everything, right? Yes. <laughs> we had, I mean, just one scene alone, The you have the multi-plane scene where the monster was walking through the city. I did that. That was called, that was a 10-foot scene. There are about... 18 
there, for every second of animation you have anywhere from 24 to five drawings. It really just depends on what's going on. So for that scene in particular, there were at least 12 drawings per second going on. So you do the math <laughs> for a scene that's about 10 seconds long, and that's a lot of drawings. So you have a stack of paper about this big that you have to shoot. You have to take your X sheets. You have to say, how long am I going to be exposing this drawing for? And that's one twelfth of a second. So, but it's a great medium. I think it's very powerful, and it's especially powerful for education, which is what I'm doing professionally now. So I love what I do. And, uh, um, what I'm going to do now, now that they've been able to tell you a little bit more about these projects and, and how they've been a part of it, I would love to open it up to the audience and see if you guys have any questions for them. Yes, sir. Um, so you said it took three weeks? Twelve. Twelve weeks. So three months. Three months for three minutes. Yeah, so <laughs> roughly, <laughs> roughly a, a minute per month. But the first month of that project was getting together and collaborating about what the story was going to be, what the characters were going to look like, how many characters we would need, effects animation, fire, water, ice, we had all different kinds of elements, smoke. Those all had to be designed so that they looked like they were part of the same world. And that also goes for the backgrounds as well. And, and how much think tank went into the actual story itself of uh, you know, the whole? I mean, there's some sto there's some really nice art in there. You know, it's a, a folksy moment in the end when the little little monster wants to be a hero too. I mean, all that stuff had to be figured out. And but the storyline really resonates well, and uh, that's what I got from it. It's, it's a, it had a beginning, a middle, and an end, and resolve. How much time is put into that creative process? Honestly, that part of the process is probably more um, important than just the animation because if you do a story where the story is not there, then you know you just have a bunch of drawings moving around, and it may look great and everything. But if you don't, it's like you don't necessarily have a message, but it has to be in some way appealing or draw you in. So that was our main concern was to create characters in a world that not only drew you in, but also gave the storyline in the short amount of time that we had that gave you something to take away with. A story worth telling. <laughs> yes, a story worth telling indeed. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Not a question, but an observation. I can tell you an educator and good people. This resonates beautifully to teach children and adults. But I also have another just short comment and observation, and it's a question for you. I noticed that the drawings were very uniform. There was a style and a very specific um, talent behind it. But then I also noticed that there was a scene where there was a teapot on a ledge. And that teapot looked very Disney to me. That is because the person who was in that scene was Dave Pruksima, who is our teacher at Laguna College of Art and Design, and he was chair at our school for the animation department, and he is still there as a teacher. So we put him and Dave Kuhn into the film, and we also put his cat in the film. <laughs> I thought that was fresh as it was very well done. Good for you. It was very nice a lot, yeah. The uh, bank robber is uh, Eric Goldberg, by the way. So we had a lot of cameos in there. We love our teachers very much, and they really mean a lot to us, so we wanted to include them as much as possible. Well, it was very supportive. From a teacher, we thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, you said you had 15 different animators working, collaborating on this project. What's it like getting, I mean, I would assume that I'm a dancer, so you know every dancer has their own style, their own unique flavor. How do you mesh 15 di very different individuals into one collaboration? 
What's the process like that? Like, I know you said that it takes a long time, but you know, if you could break that down a little bit further, I'd really be interested to find out how. Absolutely, that's a great question. Um, all animators, all artists have a different style, just like you said. So once we got our story together, the first thing that we did is I got together with Trent Corey and a few other people on the project, and we did research about what style we would be able to put together that was simple, but also very eye-catching and had a nice design. So we went with a Maurice Noble mid-50s look, which is very flat and classic, and I find it very fun, and a lot of other uh, folks found it fun, too. So we, uh, after we got the story done, we sort of looked at everyone's portfolios and uh, we submitted different character designs and the people who we kind of picked like, okay, you have a strong design sense for characters and you have a strong design sense for backgrounds. and You're really good at doing in-betweens. We all kind of like put each other sort of into these little production boxes so that we would be efficient in what we do. But also, we didn't want to put people into boxes too much because we wanted people to be able to experiment and try different things. So somebody who was doing cleanup on one thing could then, you know, everybody had to animate a scene. So as far as getting everybody on model, we did model sheets, we did turnarounds for the character, we did color modeling to figure out what the colors were gonna be for each scene. And really just came down to practice. The more that you keep to that character design, the more you're gonna have continuity between between all of your different scenes. So that's very important. And that's probably one of the hardest parts about animation is getting everybody to draw sort of the same. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, um, that's all the questions that we have for right now. We're gonna have to move on to the next. Um, I know, I'm so sorry. But we know that after the show, you can always run into these people, have a conversation with them, asking more questions yourself. Uh, so next that we have going on, give them another round of applause. <laughs> Thank you.